Theorems on Chords of a Circle, Part 2 In this module, you will learn about theorems on equal chords and their distances from the centers of the circle. Let MN be a line and E be a point. Since there are infinite numbers of points on a line, if you join these points to E, you will get infinitely many line segments EL1, EL2, EO, EL3, EL4, etc. Now, which of these is the distance of MN from E? You may think a while and get the answer. Out of these line segments, the perpendicular from E to MN, namely EO, will be the least. In mathematics, we define this least length EO to be the distance of MN from E. So you may say that the length of the perpendicular from a point to a line is the distance of the line from the point. Note that if the point lies on the line, the distance of the line from the point is zero. Now, a circle can have infinitely many chords. The longest chord is nearer to the center than the other smaller chords. Observe it by drawing several chords of a circle of different lengths and measure their distances from the center. We can observe that the distance of the diameter, which is the longest chord from the center, is zero, since the center lies on it. Let us see some relationship between the length of chords and their distances from the center in the next slide. Draw a circle of any radius on a tracing paper. Draw two equal chords, EF and GH, of it, and also the perpendiculars OM and ON on them from the center O. Fold the figure so that H falls on F and G falls on E. You may observe that O lies on the crease and N falls on M. Therefore, OM is equal to ON. If we repeat the activity by drawing congruent circles with centers O and O dash and taking equal chords EF and GH, one on each, then Draw perpendiculars OM and O dash N on them. Cut one circular disc and put it on the other so that EF coincides with GH. Then you will find that O coincides with O dash and M coincides with N. From this, we can verify the following theorem Equal chords of a circle or of congruent circles are equidistant from centers. Now let's see if its converse is also true or not in the next slide. From the center O, draw two line segments OL and OM of equal length and lying inside the circle. Then draw chords AB and CD of the circle perpendicular to OL and OM respectively. Measure the lengths of AB and CD. Are these equal? Yes, both are equal. Repeat the activity for more equal line segments and drawing the chords perpendicular to them. Thus, this verifies that converse of the previous theorem exists and is true which states that chords equidistant from the center of a circle are equal in length. If two intersecting chords of a circle make equal angles with the diameter passing through their point of intersection, prove that the chords are equal. Given that EF and GH are two chords of a circle, with center O intersecting at a point N, PQ is a diameter through N such that angle ENQ is equal to angle H N Q. You have to prove that EF is equal to GH. 
Proof. Draw perpendiculars OL and OM on chords EF and GH respectively. Now angle LON is equal to 180 degree minus 90 degree minus angle LNO equal to 90 degree minus angle LNO by angle sum property of a triangle is equal to 90 degree minus angle ENQ equal to 90 degree minus angle HNQ equal to 90 degree minus angle MNO equal to angle MON. In triangles OLN and OMN, angle LNO equal to angle MNO as given. Angle LON is equal to angle MON proved above and NO equal to NO common. Therefore, triangle OLN congruent triangle OMN. This gives OL is equal to OM C P C T. So EF is equal to GH. Let us revise all that we have learned in the module Theorems on Chords of a Circle. Part 2.